Hello again, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Paul Schrempf, joined again by Eric Spilligoy. We spent an inordinate amount of time together this week, unfortunately, or fortunately, or whatever. But Thanks, we Paul. were uh, <laughs> we were in a car for what, 10 hours, yeah, I think, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Went to um, the Easter Region meeting of Growmark and spoke to uh, 25 or 30 folks there and actually kind of did this same format uh, for an hour talking about the issues of the day. And I think it went pretty well. I, uh, they were uh, very interested in... Um, uh, a lot of the different things, a lot of the different topics that we were talking about, and it was pretty engaging. Yeah. Yeah, in particular, Paul, I know the folks kept asking us questions about all the consolidations going on in, in the crop protection marketplace, one of the major suppliers. And uh, I know one of the things we updated there, which I'll share with our viewers right now, uh, a couple of developments on all three fronts of uh, the, the crop protection acquisition consolidation game. Uh, first off, uh, ChemChina has uh, extended its offer to buy Syngenta until September 13th. Uh, originally, it was supposed to close this month, July, but they've extended that and uh, have pointed out that as long as a deal is in place by November 23rd, there should be no issue. So uh, we're still looking for that to take place before, you know, before now and uh, uh, the end of the year. Uh, the folks this week on uh, Wednesday, which was July 20th, at Dow and DuPont, the shareholders have voted to do their merger, so that will be moving forward. Uh, Paul, we know already that Dow has uh, slashed 700 jobs from uh, its payroll, and DuPont has uh, slashed about 1,700, but as analysts point out, uh, those moves were made pre-merger, uh, and there'll probably be more uh, more cuts coming up in the future, unfortunately. And then finally, on the Monsanto Bayer front, uh, Monsanto formally on Tuesday, July 19th, rejected the latest offer from Bayer, which was $125 per share price. Uh, most analysts seem to think that Monsanto will not uh, sell for less than $130, $135 per share. Uh, but one thing to point out, Paul, is the folks at Bayer have lined up financing. They could probably handle about $158 per share price for Monsanto, which would be overpaying from what most folks say. Uh, and also now, I was reading this morning that there is at least one shareholder of Bayer's that says if Monsanto keeps rejecting offers, that a hostile takeover bid might be in the offing. So we'll have to be seeing what goes on there. Well, I know the, the Gromark folks were particularly concerned about that. I'm definitely concerned about the a number of cooperative mergers that are happening uh, in Ohio, Indiana area. And they're also looking at uh, who their partners are, you know, who, who they're going to be partnering with in the future as these, uh, as these consolidations uh, happen and trying to get a sense for when, when they might be occurring and when hard decisions need to be made. So but they're very attuned to it, and, and uh, of course we are as well, and be watching that very closely. Very good. Um, One other thing, I know, Paul, you were... Uh, Fortunate enough to be uh, attend attend the Republican National Convention, which is going on here in our hometown of Cleveland, and uh, I know you weren't there for the Ted Cruz speech, which everyone was talking about. But uh, give us some of your takeaways while you were there. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? Very interesting. But but the uh, I have to thank Jay Vroom uh, from Crop Life America for the invitation to come out to the uh, Great American Farm Luncheon. Uh, which hosted uh, a number of legislators that were uh, particularly focused on agriculture. We had um, we had folks from Ohio, we had uh, Texas, Florida uh, represented, uh, just a number of legislators speaking about um, you know about the, the the issues and the Republican candidates, and a terrific fundraiser. So so you know it's it, it's great to see the it's great to see ag having its kind of its own. Uh, its own piece uh, of, of the discussion here. I think Jay, uh, in his all of his remarks throughout, reminded people that we need to be talking to folks outside of ag and not each other when we're talking about the benefits of modern agriculture. It's a really good reminder because we do tend to preach to the choir at times and we need to make sure that we're talking about uh, the benefits of agriculture across the board to our folks. Like we're here in the city, city of Cleveland, so that's something we, we regularly are, are, are uh, having the opportunity to do. And now it's a little tougher in the, when, when you're out in the country, but we, we definitely try to represent what we can to the, to the folks in the city. Before we end, Paul, I just have to ask on behalf of our viewers, of course, I know that was a $5,000 a plate luncheon you attended. Uh, what kind of food do you get for $5,000? You get a nice piece of steak and, and a swag bag. I got my second Yeti. 
<laughs> Yeti another coffee cup? mug. Ah, another coffee and thank mug. Thank you to Growmark for the ones they provided <laughs> us as well. So. so it was a good week. All right. <laughs> well, thanks very much for joining us at this edition of uh, Crop Life Retail Week, and we will see you next week.